be reading verses 21 through 30. And we're going to read these verses responsively. And what that means is I will read the odd verses and you will join me with the even verses. Again, Philippians chapter number 1, verses 21 through 30. I will read the odd verses and you will read with me the even verses. The Bible says, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet what I shall choose, I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs and that ye stand fast in one spirit with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which ye saw in me, and now here to be in me. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be at this part of the message, the service. Thank you for the word of God. It is your word, Lord, that's going to help that person that's discouraged this morning. It's your word that's going to help that person that's going through a trial, or that person that's just in need of growth. I pray that as our pastor preaches this morning, that you would help this morning not to be in vain, but may we sit diligently, eager to hear the message from your word, from your man, and bless this period of time of preaching, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. The call to go to Mount Moriah came to Abraham, but the offering placed before the Lord was not a lamb bound his only son and as a knife was raised a sacrifice became the price of praise when praise demands a sacrifice i'll worship even then surrendering the dearest things in life and if devotion me all. He'll find me faithful to his call when praise demands a sacrifice. The call to go to Calvary had come to God's own Son. An altar waited for the Lamb he would become. His hands raised up to heaven, and as the cross was raised, with his life he paid the price of praise. When praise demands a sacrifice, I'll worship even then, surrendering the dearest things in life, and if devotion me all. He'll find me faithful to his call when praise demands a sacrifice. God hears the words of praise we lift, yet I have found. He's honored more by what I'm willing to lay down. When praise demands a sacrifice, I'll worship even then, surrendering the dearest things in life. And if devotion costs me all, he'll find me faithful to his call. When praise demands a sacrifice, I'll worship even then, surrendering the dearest things in life. Devotion comes. 
trust me on He'll find me faithful to His call When praise demands a sacrifice Thank you for that. I would have you to have your Bibles open to Philippians. Before we get started, I do want to say <clears throat> a couple things. I want to thank you for praying for me over the last uh, over the last few months. I've had this breathing issue since really October, and um, it, it, it it seemed better in February and, and January. It's gotten worse, and uh, and just I can't. I don't have as as much energy. I can't really you know. And sometimes if I do a lot of talking, it bothers me. So I I, I, I appreciate your prayers. This is the first time. I, I've preached since, um, I think, the first Sunday in March. I taught Sunday school this morning, but they don't count because they don't listen. <laughs> so, but, um, but I want to thank you for that. Just to let you know, uh, it, it, there was one time uh, a couple months ago where I was preaching, and it was, it was kind of bad, and I was like five minutes into the message, and I was, I was struggling a little bit. I'm think, I was thinking, how do you end a message after five minutes? And uh, I told Brother Treber that. He goes, oh, your church would have been fine with that. <clears throat> so for right now, until it gets completely cleared up, I have the guys, they're ready in case I can't. Brother Pichardo, he was, you're ready for this morning, aren't you? It's not your day. Uh, it's like, Brother Pichardo's like, so when do I know if I'm preaching? It's like right after the special. And by the way, if, if for some reason in one of the messages I'm preaching, I get done a little early, you'll know why. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure that won't kill you. You'll probably enjoy that. So that's where I'm at. Do continue to pray that this thing gets, gets, gets cleared up. And then I do want to say I've not said much. I've basically moderated a little bit of the services because of this. But thank you for, for your vote. Um, that was very encouraging. And um, I don't think you knew what you were doing. But, you know, <clears throat> there had to be somebody here that doesn't like me. Because there's a lot of you here I don't like. We were, we, were, <clears throat> we were in San Diego on that Sunday. <clears throat> and we were in Brother Fisher's church. And he was having the Lord's Supper. Very serious. Very serious time, you know. And it was real quiet. And, and um, right in the middle of the Lord's Supper, my wife's phone goes off. Yeah, and, it's, and she couldn't find it. And it was Brother Ross. He's going to call and tell us about the vote. I'm like, really? You didn't think we were in church on Sunday night? And so uh, thank you for that, and, and I appreciate it. I really am humbled by it, to be real honest with you. I don't think you know what you're doing, but that's your fault, not mine. We have a little group text for our family, and after it was like 100%, they were all saying, like, that can't be true because I voted no. So I think Brother Ross lied. One thing... Um, we are in our, our building program, and to be honest with you, this is, if from, from a human perspective, this is a very bad time for me not to, to have been around as much. Um, by the way, that's the Sundays I wasn't here. Um, you know, I was at home. I, I was watching church services at home. When one Sunday, we, I, I didn't come. I was, we saw like four, I watched like four or five different services, guys I know, and, and they have their services Sunday night in the East Coast. And so I had a lot of church, okay? Um, I wasn't ditching out. I wasn't home watching, you know, Andy Griffith show or something. But, um, but we have a building coming. And to be honest with you, I've thought because of, 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 of not being able to be in the pulpit, I've thought a lot about maybe moving the Giving Sunday. But I just don't think that's the right thing to do. We get into summer and some other things. And maybe it's just God this time saying, we've got this covered. We need a good offering on May 20th. I don't want to belabor it. We'll talk more about it. But we need some money up front so we can do the hiring out to get inside of the building to get the building going. And so I'm asking you to pray about it. I've not come up and given our testimony of how much we're going to give. But um, just the number I'm thinking of right now for sure, I'm, I'm aiming for at least 8000 on that day. And, and, and to be honest with you, I want to give more. And, and I've been, we think about it and we save it. But I want us to all think, this one's a big one. And so this morning, our theme for our, our, is standing together. When we introduced the theme, that was on a Sunday when I could not speak to you. But we do need to stand together. 
If you're going to accomplish anything as a church, you're going to accomplish anything, we need to stand together. Yes, sir. All of us doing our part and doing what we can. You know, people don't like to stand. Uh, people like to be out of the limelight. They don't want people to know where, where, they, where they stand, what they believe. They just kind of want to back off, particularly the way, our, the way our society is today. Okay, If you have any type of normal views, if you believe that marriage is a man or a woman, by the way, God believes that, if you believe there are only two genders, male and female, and you can't change them, that that would be that that would be um, controversial is boggles my mind. Yeah. You know, Alaska is a very conservative state, and they voted down a law which would have made it where bathrooms are just men and women, and it failed. And they're conservative, but you know why they did it? Because they didn't want the they didn't want the economic pressure that businesses would put on them if they did. What is wrong with our country? Come on. And they're trying to shut us up. And I'm not saying we need to be mean spirited. And I'm not saying that's our fight. What I'm just saying is we need to stand together for what is right and what's in the Word of God if we're going to accomplish Amen. anything. And people don't want to stand. <clears throat> terrorist attack and we're afraid to say that was a terrorist attack we're afraid to say it was an Islamic terrorist attack by the way London is everything that the United States is trying to become and how is that working for them not well yeah, right. but, but, but back to the reality I'm not, I'm not going political here I'm just saying we need to stand yeah. we are in a spiritual war when I turned 18 they had just reinstated um, where you have to uh, uh, sign up, just in, register just in case there's a draft for war. Not that they were going to do it. They just decided in case of a huge emergency, we want to have that in place. You know, and, and, and I remember during that time, there was a lot of protest of that. And there was one college kid, and he had a sign, nothing is worth dying for. If nothing is worth dying for, Nothing is worth living for, okay? If nothing is worth standing for, then our life is just going to be a mess and we're going to be go back and forth. But as a church, spiritually speaking, when it comes to what God wants to do in our church, it will never happen if we don't stand together. Understand this, a compliment doesn't, doesn't come when we avoid standing, but when we take a stand. John Wooden was probably the greatest basketball coach of all time, the most successful. He was not successful right away. Before he came to UCLA, he, he coached a, a small-time school in Indiana. It was Indiana State University. One year, three or four years into his coaching, they actually had a good team, and they qualified for their tournament. It was not the NCAA tournament. It was the secondary tournament. They were not in the top league. John Wooden had a black player on his team, which was, at that time, we still had the, there was still segregation, all that nonsense. And his team was invited to the tournament. When they found out, they told him, if that player comes, you cannot bring your team to the tournament. Now, this player was not even a starter. This was not a guy that would have made a difference on their team. And John Wooden said, if he isn't, allowed to come, our team isn't coming. And by the way, because he stood, the number one ranked team in the tournament who didn't even have a black player on their team said, if that's the reason they're not coming, we're not coming either. Come on. Amen. And they flipped it and they let them come. Why? Someone stood. You got to stand if you're going to accomplish something. If you're going to change, you have to stand something. We are in the book of Philippians this morning. You're probably thinking, man, this is introduction. I thought you said you weren't going to go very long. <clears throat> Don't worry. Plane's going to get up and get down real fast, okay? Uh, several years ago, we looked through the book of Philippians. The main theme of the book is joy, joy. But in the s section of verses we read, it's talking about um, there is joy when we stand, 
when we stand for that which is right. Standing means something. When, when we think of the word stand in that sense, we understand that it identifies our position, who we are. When we stand, we're saying, this is, I'm letting everybody know, this is who I am. And that's right. Christianity thinks we can reach the world better if we don't do that. That's not true. Jesus didn't do that. He said, I am the way. When we stand, it not only identifies our position, it establishes our position. We're saying, I'm not moving. I'm standing. This is my spot. And I'm not going to be pushed off. But also, it defends our position. When you stand, you say, if you're going to bring it on, bring it on. Now, you may not like our president, but he did tell Syria, if you do that again, that's a line in the sand, we will retaliate. Yeah. Whether you like that or not, to be honest with you, I like it. If you're going to say it, don't back down. Right. And he did tell him. But see, we're so wishy-washy, you know. We tell our kids that they do something. That's one. Listen, that's all they get is one. Yeah, come on. That's one, you lose. But, and then we get to three, and then we don't do what we said we're going to do. <clears throat> but let's just stand. Let's not think that we're going to reach anybody, we're going to accomplish anything as a church, if we're not willing to stand for something, and we're not willing to stand together for something. We have to. I just saw a video of a pastor of a huge church in New York, <clears throat> allegedly a Baptist church. I saw the video. He said, he got up and said that if we say that Jesus is the only way to take us to heaven and keep us from hell, that's wrong. He said that he'll just celebrate anything that helps your relationship with God. And his whole point was that's divisive. And there's already too many things in this country that are divisive. Let's not add another one. He needs to resign. You know what the church does? And I, I'm going to get to the outline in a second. <clears throat> the church takes whatever the nonsense the world is spewing and wants to make the church do that too. It's called social activism. Now, by the way, there are some things we ought to be active about. Okay? <clears throat> and if we live the word of God, it'll automatically come. <clears throat> but I'm not going to take some nonsense that the church, the world throws out there and make it a part of the church. See, we're going to stand together, but the Lord wants us to stand for the right things. Amen. What are they? I'm glad you asked. Let me give you five of them. First of all, he wants us to stand for the Lord. Yeah. Look at verse 21 of Philippians. <clears throat> Paul said, for me to live is what? Christ. Is die? You were a little ahead of me, thanks. For me to live is Christ. And to die is gain. Paul said, listen, if I'm living, you know what my life is? My life is Christ. And he was willing to stand up to that and to suffer persecution. Now, Paul knew all about persecution. I, look, one of the reasons, and, and, and maybe I'm going a little extra biblical here, but I'm, it's just, maybe it's a thought, Brother Bichardo. Maybe it wasn't in your outline this morning that you're not going to use. But... Um, <laughs> You know, Paul, Paul persecuted Christians. He killed them. He caused some to recant in their faith. But I'll tell you this, he saw some of them that were rock solid in their faith to death. And, I, and, and Paul, although he killed Christians, was religious. He just didn't get it. But I guarantee you when the Lord came to him that day, he had been thinking about all those people that either you reject Christ or you will be killed and are like, kill me. That had to get on his conscience. That had to him like, what do these people have? And so now he's saved and he says, if I'm alive, my whole life is going to be for Christ. Everybody lives for something. Amen. Can I ask you a question this morning? What do you live for? Say, why? Well, I live, because, I live for my basketball team. Well, guess what? None of our teams made the playoffs. Now, I'm a hockey guy. They, they, as far, we have two teams in the playoffs. Look, they should have both stayed home. They can't win a game. 
They're, wa they're wasting your time. And by the way, I'm not discouraged because they're both down 2 nothing. I, it's like, okay, they, they didn't win, big deal. I say, Look, our, we, we throw our life into things that are just not very important. But I'll tell you one thing that is always important. For me to live is Christ. Hey, <clears throat> may we, everything we do, ultimately, I want to bring, and I hope that you want to bring honor and glory to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Our theme a couple years ago, lift him up. Yep. The year before that, to the glory of God. Let's just set that in stone. Everything we do, listen, we're in, and, and we'll apply this stuff to the building, I guess, but in, in, in later, but, but think of it this way. Why do we want to build that? Why do we want to keep reaching people? Why do we want to just keep going forward? Because I want God to be glorified. I want more people to glorify him. Right. I want to help people understand that he is it. Revelation 4.11, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So if everything's created, and we're supposed to bring honor and glory to God, and that brings pleasure to God, we can be pleasure to God when we honor and glorify him, and we help others to do the same. Let's stand for the Lord. If Christ is our ultimate <clears throat> passion in, Christ, in, in life, we will stand for him. Let me ask you this question. Will you stand for him? Will you as a church stand with us in everything we do to try to bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ? Sometimes people, ah, oh, you know, <clears throat> I burned out. You know why you burned out? Because you didn't put Jesus first and foremost. So, well, no, I just, I got too bad. I, 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 maybe you need to look at your schedule. But, but when we do things for the wrong reason, the wrong purpose, of course we're going to burn out. Secondly, let's stand for the testimony. Look at verse 27, the first part. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Now, when we think of conversation, the way the word is used today is uh, uh, talking back and forth to one another. The old English word conversation means your manner of life, how you live. And he says the way we live ought to be, as he says here, that it becometh the gospel of Christ. In other words, it matches up. In other words, the way we live matches up with the fact that we've been saved by the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our life ought to match up with what the Bible says if we're God's children. If we are his children, should we not live like we are his children? If we are saved, it will come out. Someone has said con conduct reveals content, and whatever is in us will soon be apparent on the outside of our lives. If I spend enough time with you, I can tell what's important to you. If I, if I sit down and have a conversation, and like we just talked, and I ask questions, whenever I try to meet someone, I want to ask questions, I want to get to know them. I can find out what's important to you. It'll come out. You can't hide it. And if the Lord's important to us, and that doesn't mean we're gonna we're gonna walk around with a halo on our head. By the way, if you have a halo on your head, there's two horns holding it up. Okay, you know, it does the holier than thou, and oh, no, no, you're, there's not gonna be some kind of glowing around you. Okay, unless you went to this uh, uh, tanning parlor, not gonna happen. But there ought to be something in your life that says, hey, this person, there's something different. They gotta know the Lord. What is hurtful? It's when we live a life against God's word and against God's laws. When we got saved, we became a new creature in every way, not just on Sunday. You got to understand this. Being a Christian isn't just Sunday. Well, yeah, I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sunday morning. Well, what are you doing the rest of the time? Yeah, if I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. 20, what, what, think of your, uh, what's your eth ethnicity? Now, some of us, it's a mixture, Right? Whatever your ethnic background is, you're that 24 hours a day. Yeah. It's who you are. It's your DNA. It ought to be like that as a Christian, too. I'm a Christian 24 hours a day. Yeah. I didn't lose it. I gained it. I'm never going to lose it. And I ought to be happy about it. But it ought to show forth in our life. Amen. We ought to stand together for living right, not some sloppy life that blames sin on our humanity. 
And by the way, I understand when we sin or do long, it's our identity, but we need to work on that. But some people, you know, this, this is just too strong. I, 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 this sin is just too strong. I can't give it up. It's just too much. Uh, I read a story. There was a pastor. And a man from his church came in, and he said, he goes, I'm just struggling with immorality. I'm just immoral with girls. He goes, and I've tried to stop, and, and I'm just telling you, I'm just different. I can't do it. And the pastor said, really? He goes, I'll tell you what. What if I was with you when you were with a girl and you were getting ready to be immoral? And right when you were getting ready to be immoral, I pulled out a wad of $100 bills. And I said, you can have all this money if you don't do that. Would you do it? He goes, would you take He goes, I take the money. He goes, so you've just established it's not that you can't do it. It's that you won't stop. See, it's because it's not important enough for us to live right, we don't. The gospel and the Lord Jesus Christ is not important to us to try to fight sin and do the right thing. It's always a matter of motivation. And if we understand that we have a testimony, I hope that when, if people know you're from Pacific Baptist Church, that it's a good testimony. Amen. If not, tell them you're a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> Give the Mormons a bad name, okay? Right? Like when Oscar one time, we went and had a class activity, and we, uh, we, we all went out to uh, Greenfield. We had a busload of people. We had a great time. We, that was great. And so you leave. You have to go in the traffic circle. Oscar decides, Oscar decides, I'm going to go around the traffic circle about four times. People full of like nothing but meat. And now he didn't notice this, but I did. As he was driving around, third t three times I heard people honk. I think he cut someone off. And I'm thinking, great, here we are driving the church bus, and he's cutting people off. And then we pulled up here, and I looked at it, and, it, and I looked at the bus, and it said, Iglesia Baptista de Pacifico. I'm like, well, good, only the Spanish ones know we cut them off. Okay. By the way, there's a reason we don't give you bumper stickers that say, I love Pacific Baptist. I've seen you drive. But I'm saying, let's have a, I'm not, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to guilt you or anything, but let's do what we can to at least have our life match up with the fact that we say we know Jesus Christ. We ought to also stand for the brethren. Look what Paul says to them. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that you stand fast, and he says, in one spirit. He's not just talking to one person. And he mentions a, a unity a little later, one mind. He's not talking to one person. He goes, I want, you, I want to hear that all of you are together in this. Church isn't just about you. Church isn't just about me. You know what church is about? It's about all of us. Right. We're a group. Let's stand together as brethren. See your church as a second family, as it were. You know, look, have you ever come in and maybe you're having a bad day and you come to church? By the way, when you're having a bad day, is a good time to come to church. Yeah. Sometimes like, you know, I'm just not feeling it today. Man, I'm never feeling it when the alarm goes off. But, but you say, I'm just having a bad day. Listen, come to church and maybe your bad day will turn. That's right. We need each other. And so, brethren, we need to stand together. If a family is not together, of course there's going to be issues. Of course the closeness is not going to be felt. Everybody needs a church family. And so let's all stand together. Church, it's important for us. We, we are very, 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 we're, we're very involved in getting out there and trying to help people and reach people and help everybody we can. But let's not neglect each other. Amen. Let's not neglect each other. Let's stand together as, the, as, as brethren. You know, I, I, one thing I've always, I always wanted in my family when I was, before I was even married, I always wanted to have the can, kind of family where as my children grew, as they got older, they would be comfortable coming back to the house. And then as they had grandkids, you know, they just drop them off. Now, I'm, 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 I'm starting to rethink that one. Okay. Because <clears throat> you know, they drop. I, I love having the kids around. And sometimes I'm like, I just go to my room and say, leave me alone. But, but you know, that's kind of happened in our family. And by the way, if you're a close family, that's going to happen. You're going to want to be around each other. Absolutely. And, and look, some of you, and I, I don't have a lot of time because I, I, I'm not going to go long, and I am going long. But... But, but, but we, we need to be together. Some of you are missing out because you only come on Sunday mornings. 
What about, and by the way, if you're here in the morning and you're newer, you ought to get involved in an adult Sunday school class. They say, well, it's just another teaching time. No, but it's a smaller group and it'll be easier for you to meet some people. By the way, you ought to be back here on Sunday night. For some of you new and you might not get that, but let me say this. I would have a hard time. I'm not going to look at it. I don't want you to get mad at me. I'm not, I would have a hard time sitting at home watching television when I could be at church on Sunday night. Okay? By the way, we find all kinds of excuses. Why well, I can't make it to church tonight. I, I don't feel good. But if someone invited you to the mall. By the way, if they do invite me, I need a new suit. Okay? You, you'd find energy to go. You know, people have these diseases where they're sick one day a week, and that day is always Sunday. Look, if you're sick 10 Sundays in a year, you ought to be sick 10 Mondays, 10 Tuesdays, 2 Wednesdays, 10 Thursdays, 10 Fridays, and 10 Saturdays. But you're not, and you're never sick when the mall's open. So let's, let's just, look, we, and I'm not trying to dump on you, I'm just saying, it's nice when we're around each other more, we, we get to, to, to meet hear more new people and we're encouraging each other and we need good godly friends next let's stand together for the faith he says with one mind verse 27 striving together for the faith now he's going to tell us a specific faith in a minute but we do need to stand for the faith what is the faith the faith is a is our central set of core doctrines what we believe okay and we need to understand the bible that's why uh, bring your bible when you come to church and let's look at the verses together. I'm not going to just, you know, I'm not going to take three words out of a verse and just go on a tangent. I like to see what the Bible says. Okay? And, 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 and I encourage you, bring up, <clears throat> and you want to use your phone or your iPad, that's fine. I, I, I discourage that because I, I, you're going to get text, okay, and you're going to get stuff like that. You're looking at Philippians 4-7, and then your mom texts you, okay? It's not Philippians anymore. It's, it's Thelma, all right? But, so, but, but we need to understand and kind of learn what we believe. By the way, we've had a few in the past that get caught up in some off-the-wall garbage doctrine because some internet idiot thinks he found something that nobody else has ever seen. Okay? Well, I've been doing this illness. I've had some extra time to read. I've been reading a lot through Revelation and some of the other things. And it's just, I already knew what I believed. That's just nonsense. They're misinterpreting the Bible, spiritualizing things. Be very, very careful about that. Okay, by the way, a core doctrine in the Bible is not that God hates people. I had a guy sit in my office and said, would you ever send me out to start a church because I believe God hates people? And I looked at him and I said, absolutely not, never. And I said, now I would believe that except there's this one little obscure verse in the Bible. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. If that wasn't there, I'd probably be with you and I'd hate people too. Okay, and he just kind of gave me a look. I'm like, yep, that's where we're at. But listen, let's, 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 let's defend the faith. Let's stand together for what we believe. And then lastly, let's stand together for the gospel, for the faith of the gospel. That's what it's all about. Listen, if you're saved, you ought to be thankful you're saved. If you're saved and it's done anything in your life, you're glad about it. Man, I, I can't think enough about when I got saved. So I've been reading and studying through Revelations lately, and hell's in there, so's heaven. I'm glad that's settled. Because yep. there was a time in my life it was not settled. Yep. And, and, and I thank God as I read, heaven's going to be great, hell, not so much. Yep. And I'm thankful I'm saved. I'm, and I'm not just thankful I'm saved because my eternal destiny has been changed. I'm thankful I'm saved because my life on this earth is better. Yep. Now I know Paul says that if, if the resurrection is not true, we are of all men most miserable. I've not faced a lot of persecution like they faced in their life. It's been pretty good. It's been good. Now, has there been struggles and all that? Yeah. Well, thank God that I know the Lord and I'm saved. Yeah. By the way, we need to say, what's the building all about? We need room. We need facilities to do more, Amen. to help more people. You say, but isn't there enough people here? Listen, no. Is there... Is, Look at our city, Long Beach. Does it seem to you like it's a gospel-driven city? No. By the way, there are more people out there that don't believe the garbage that the media and all that is pushing than there are that do believe that nonsense. They just have the microphone. And, and they want truth. Some of them just don't know what it is yet. Or maybe if not, they, they've heard it. But they've not really put it together yet or accepted it. We need, and a little push, a little nudge, a little help, they could get there. 
That's our job. So I, I don't think we ought to reach more people. You're in the wrong church. That is selfish Christianity. Selfish. If someone told me, hey, there's a guy giving away a million dollars to anybody that will come by, I'm going to tell all my family. And then I'll tell other people. <laughs> okay. the unlimited supply. We get coupons and stuff from people like, hey, they're, they're doing this. It's free if you go do this. You know, it's 31 flavors, 31 first anniversary. If you want to wait in line for two hours, you can save $2. Free ice cream. Listen, I ain't waiting two hours for free ice cream. I'll go to Rite Aid. All right? But we would share that with people. But yet we won't share the good news of Jesus Christ. You say, I don't want to be seen as a weirdo. You're already seen as a weirdo. Just confirm it. Just kidding. You're not going to. Listen, we don't grab people by their shirt and say, we're, we're going we're gonna to hold you against your door until you get saved. You know, people, what? a lot of people actually just listen to you. They'll take that invitation. We've got to let it know. And that's a core value. Listen, everything we're mentioning here, the building is a big part of it. We need to get this done. And the only way we're going to do anything and accomplish anything is if we work together. Years ago, there was a World Fair. They had two big horses. I think they were Clydesdales, if I'm not mistaken. They pulled an amazing amount of weight. They had a competition. Which horse can pull the most? One pulled 9,000 pounds. The second place pulled over 8,000. After they were done, those in charge said, I wonder how much both of them working together could pull. Most of them assumed about 17,000, right? 9,000 plus 8,000 is about 17. So they put the horses together, and to their surprise, the two horses working together were able to pull over 30,000 pounds. The world calls that synergy. You know, synergy sounds to me like the power to sin, you know. So I don't like that word. But what was the principle? Working together, they could accomplish more than working individually. And, you know, all of us working together as a church, we can make a dent not just in this city, but in our state, Lord willing, in our country. And we're already making a difference in the world, and we can do it to a greater extent. Yes, sir. But we have to work together. We have to stand together to get this done. Yep. And our, our offering Sundays, really, it's about a, what's the date today? 8-15, thanks for coming. About a month away. I hope you've been praying and thinking about it. I hope, I, I, you know, prayer is going to be a big thing, but I hope you're praying, God, do something great in my life, to be able to be a part of this and do something great through the church. But let's keep standing together. This isn't my church. Okay? I'm not, you know, I hear these guys sometimes, these pastors, you know, oh, my ministry, I, I don't have a ministry. It's just, it's, it's the, our ministry is the Lord's ministry. It's our ministry. Yeah. We need to work together yeah. if we're going to do something. And we can do great things. By the way, we have. Look around you. Everybody, some, you know, you look around, oh, look at all these people. They all look like saints. Listen, I know the stories, okay? You can put a suit on Satan. He'd look pretty good. Yeah. But let's stand together today. Amen. Let's all stand, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed, just for a minute.